Celia has had a regular car journey to work, which has previously taken an average of 42 minutes. The local council has recently altered the road layout and Celia is convinced that this has increased the journey time. To, inv to investigate further, she records the time taken for 12 journeys. The 12 journeys have a mean time of 50 minutes and a standard deviation of 15 minutes. Conduct a suitable hypothesis test at the 5% level to identify whether there is evidence for her contention that the average journey has increased. So what do you think here? Should we use a Z-test or a T-test? Now for this exercise, we're indeed going to be using a T-test because the sample size is less than 30. Okay, so 12 journeys. And we don't know the population standard deviation either. Okay. So the first thing to do is to state the nil and alternative hypotheses. Okay. Now, Celia originally says that her journey to work takes an average of 42 minutes. So mu is 42 minutes. But then the local council alters the road and Celia is convinced that this has increased the journey time. So then the alternative hypothesis is that now it's higher than 42 minutes. Okay. Now let's draw the distribution. Now, do you think this is a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test? Now, in this case, this is indeed a one-tailed test. Okay. Because the only possibility in the alternative hypothesis is that it's higher than 42. Okay. And in this case, because we believe it might be higher than 42, the rejection region is on the right-hand side. Okay, so the rejection region. Now, the rest of the area is the 0 0.95, and the rejection area is the 5%, so 0 0.05. Okay. Now we need to find the critical value. This is the value at which the rejection region starts. Okay, so here. Now, in order to do that, we need to look at the T table. Now, here is the significance level, or R alpha, which in our case we said was 5%, so 0 0.05. And then we need to find out the degrees of freedom. Remember, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so the sample size minus 1, which in our case is 12 minus 1, which is equal to 11. So we're going to look for 11 degrees of freedom, which is here. And then we need to match that with... 0 0.05 of significance level and we get this number here which if we approximate we get 1.796 and this can be either plus or minus depending on the exercise now in our case we're on the positive side so we need plus so we write down 1.796 and so this is our critical value now, in order to determine whether we can reject or accept the null hypothesis, we now need to find the t-value. And depending on where that t-value is, whether it's in the rejection region or in the acceptance region, we then draw a conclusion. So remember, the formula for the t-value is the sample mean minus the hypothesized mean over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So let's write down what we know first before using the formula. We know the sample size is 12. Then the sample mean, it says 12 journeys have a mean time of 50. So the sample mean is 50. And the standard deviation is 15. So now we can write down and use the formula. So the t-value is the sample mean, 50, minus the hypothesized mean, which remember is this number here, 42 minus 42 over the sample standard deviation 15 divided by the square root of n and if you plug this into the calculator you should get approximately 1.85 now as you can see 1.85 is 
inside the rejection region which means that we reject hetero the null hypothesis okay in other words now that there's been uh, works on the road layout the journey time has indeed increased okay so it is indeed higher than 42. let's look at another example when operating normally the manufacturing process produces tablets for which the mean weight is intended to be five grams nothing is known about the overall standard deviation A random sample of 12 tablets produces the following data Sample mean 5.05 grams, sample standard deviation 0 0.1. Conduct a suitable hypothesis test at the 5% level to test the null hypothesis that the mean weight of tablets being produced is not above 5 grams. So what do you think here? Do we need to use a Z test or a T test? Now for this exercise, we indeed need again to use the T test. And this is because the sample size is 12 tablets, and they also say nothing is known about the overall standard deviation. Okay, so let's write down the null and alternative hypotheses again. The null hypothesis is that the mean weight is intended to be five grams, so five. And then it says, conduct a suitable hypothesis test to test that the mean weight of tablets being produced is not above five grams okay so this means that the alternative hypothesis is saying it is above five grams okay again let's draw the distribution so conveniently this is the same as the last exercise so higher than five is the alternative hypothesis which means it can only go one way so higher which is why it's a one tail test and we shade the region on the right hand side which again is the rejection region so at the five percent level so the rejection area is 0 0.05 and the rest is 0 0.95 excellent now again we need to find the critical value now as you'll notice again the sample size here is 12 again so our degrees of freedom is still 11 and alpha, our significance level, is also 0 0.05. So again, we find the same value as before. Now again, we also need the positive value again. So this is 1.796. And now, in order to determine whether we reject or accept the null hypothesis, we need to find the t value. So let's write down what we know first. The sample size is 12. The sample mean is 5.05 .05, and the sample standard deviation is 0 0.1 therefore the t-value is the sample mean 5.05 .05, minus the hypothesized mean which remember is 5 over the sample standard deviation 0 0.1 divided by the square root of n the sample size and if you plug this into the calculator you should get approximately 1.732 now as you can see in the distribution 1.732 is indeed in the acceptance region so it's not in the rejection region okay it comes before the critical value therefore we fail to reject hetero we fail to reject hetero okay which means, in words, that the mean uh, weight of tablets is indeed 5 grams. So let me know down in the comments if this is clear. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.